Hi, today JLC 3DP sent me the final part for the handlebar of the EUC. Uh, this is the final part, uh, printed with the stainless steel. And I also ordered uh, this mudguard that I previously printed with the ABS. And this one is printed with the SLS nylon. No layer line and it has like a sand texture. And I believe it has a better layer fusion because it's powder. So with the FDM printing, if I break it in this direction, it will be uh, easily break because the layer line is, is laying in this uh, direction. I believe that this one will be uh, more durable. Uh, this is the original one. It's really thin. Okay, take a closer look at the stainless steel part. This one is 3 millimeters, and I cut off the metal here to reduce the weight. So one pair of this bracket can carry 50 kilograms, and it's really light, even though it's uh, made from stainless steel. If I made this with the uh, bending process, I need to make a fixture for bending, and it will cost a lot more than uh, 3D printing in metal. See here, first bend, second bend, and in this direction is go up, first bend, and second bend. A 3D shape, and this will follow the line of the top pad of my EUC in the back side. I will scan this part to check the deformation. Uh, the last one, the front part, has about uh, 2.5 millimeters deformation, but this one is uh, smaller and shorter. So I think the deformation will be a lot less. Look like it's aligned. So it's aligned pretty well here. Okay, I'll use the yeah, scan letter for scanning. This letter egg was sent to me by Curity. Ready for scanning. I'll scan in this orientation. Scan the top and then flip. Scan the bottom and then I merge in the CR scan software. And I put some 3mm markers on the sides that will be visible on both scans. So this marker dots will be visible on both directions. I will scan with 7 lines later because it's a small object. I use resolution 0 0.15 and then I choose the automatic exposure uh, parallel lines global marker. So I scan all the marker first. I click on point clouds and it will process the marker. Now the marker is registered. So I use seven line to uh, scan this. Okay, this is can I make another scan. I will flip it on the other side. Okay, now checking. Then the marker first. Okay. I like the preview windows that's on a bigger screen. It's really indicative of what you have scanned. Okay, next I will scan this uh, mudguard. That pre uh, this one I make a single scan in 34 lines because this one can put in the this orientation. I will raise this up a bit so that it will be easier to delete the flat plate. I will overlap the point cloud to the original design to see how much it's deformed. So I don't need a lot of resolution. Okay, I start with the global marker. So I use cross line, see? The uh, 34 line is faster than 7 line when you scan a large just surface. You don't have to move your hand a lot while you're scanning.
If I use 7 lines to scan this part without a scanning tower, it will be difficult to capture the, the taller portion of this mudguard. Okay. I will compare it to the original design, how much it's deformed. Okay, let's clean this up. I will map the point cloud with the 0 0.15. Here's the top part. I move to the bottom part. 0 0.15 resolution. See the bottom part. Okay, I will merge them. Manual merging, marker merging, top bottom. So move it. Not so. So there should be a marker here. One, one, two, two, three, and four. Okay, four is enough. I place start one. Okay, now it's merge. I will mesh it. See how it looks. Here is the mesh. Look very nice. I will export it into ASC format. The mod guard. I'll clean it. Okay, we use 0 0.2. Okay, let's try to mesh it. Some streaking line. Okay, look nice. So I will export it as the ASC. Okay, this is the original cat a design for the rear bracket. The clean point clouds from the scanning. I fix it to the mounting holes here. Uh, this is a fixing position and this hole start to lose its position just a little bit. 0.2 millimeters. And you can look from the edge here that it start to move toward the bottom about 0.58 millimeters. And this one is uh, 0 0.4. So I think this should fit because it's less than a millimeter. Uh, if you have a scanner and you need to check your uh, machine part, uh, this will be very uh, useful tools to check 3D dimensional color. And you can also do a pre-camber, which means that if the object will move to the left uh, 0 0.5 millimeter after printing, you can design uh, in the CAD that the object move to the right to compensate before printing and after printing it should be in the exact point but to do that you need to print uh, two or three times <laughs> it cost uh, a bit more okay let's move to the mudguard here's the nylon mudguard okay so you can see that it deformed we have a uh, 2.4 millimeters deformation but the uh, mounting hole looks uh, okay so it should fit and start to twist at the top uh, probably nylon will be a difficult material for printing the deformation is, is more than a stainless steel printing okay next i will assemble the brackets so after assemble it's supposed to uh, look like this uh, this is uh, m4 6.5 by 8 and set the heating lock to 320 degrees Celsius. Okay, all the brass insert is in. This is M4 by 12. Uh, I will remove uh, this uh, two screw. You can see that the is a thick aluminum plate here that the handle will be mounted onto M4 by Yeah, then to the back.
front. Ding. Here's the final part of my three episodes. A handlebar for this EUC Bigo T4. Uh, the front one is a bit larger and follow the shape of the top pad and you can grab while you're braking or sitting and the real one is for lifting and also you can lay it on the floor and it's uh, follow the shape of the top pad. It won't be protruding too much.